Hello, this is Vicky from the Spellbound Bee Company and in this video we're going to get to play. So within this big collection we've sort of got little mini sub collections. So if you're uh, a baker then we've got we've got cakes and we've got tarts for you to play with. Um, you can add in the let's go off, not go off the top of the screen you can add in cup cup and saucer and a teapot and of course you can make that saucer bigger to make a plate as well if you wanted to i think if you'd got a reasonable sized plate a couple of the two or three of the battenbergs stacked up on top would make quite a nice brooch um so there's there's that's an option that you could go with we've then got the playing cards so we've got um the different playing cards there we've got the the suits as well there's that collection and then you've got the out and out Alicey bits so you've got the Cheshire Cat smiles you've got the the flamingo croquet um, mallets in there as well so you could always just put a couple of six or eight millimeter rounds with the flamingo and there you've got a, a little croquet set um, all the different things you can do with that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a necklace using lots of the components. Maybe not quite all of them because there are quite a lot there to play with. But um, let's have a look and see what we can come up with. So if I just move everything out of the way to start. Now, I, I think I want to do a pendant and I do have a little bit of a thing about flamingos. So let's start by putting the flamingo in the middle of the necklace and I'm going to have him hanging upside down because it's a nod to the inspiration for the whole collection of, of work that I've done. So um, let's have him upside down and then let's add in a cup of tea and a teapot and I think to have the teapot pouring rather than being one on a head pin I think that's quite nice. But looking at that now, I think we maybe need to, to have a look and see how we're going to connect it, whether we're going to connect it straight through that one leg. I think that's going to be the best way to, to connect it. So there we go. And then what should we have next? Let's have a look. So we can have a, a heart or... Do we want a cupcake? What I'm going to do with the cupcakes is I'm actually going to take them off the head pins and I'm going to thread straight through the bead rather than have it with the head pin. So here we go. I think I've got an arrangement I'm happy with and we can't quite get it all in the camera at once. So I will show you as we're going along and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the spare elements to one side so I'll make some more pairs of those so we've got some earrings and I'm going to use needle and thread to connect to the components and I'm going to use a small bead in between so that to just to give them a little bit of space so it gives your eye somewhere to rest and I'm trying to decide now whether I'm going to use something like a three millimeter silver round or whether I'm going to use some more of the three millimetre pearls that are used on the top of the teapot. So let's zoom back in again. There we go. And there's the three mil rounds and there's the three mil pearls. And I think I'm going to use the rounds just because they've just got that little bit more shine to them and it'll just add a little extra something to the end of the necklace. So what we need to do now is we're going to connect the components together and I'm going to do this using needle and thread and I'm going to use different colours of thread depending on what I'm connecting together. So what I think what I'll do is have a few needles threaded up with different colours but we'll see how we go along as we're working. So I'm going to start by connecting the hat to the flamingo. Now, because I wasn't sure how I was going to use any of the components, I've actually finished off all of my thread ends. So this gives me a way to start from, from scratch. And it also has the advantage that if anything starts to wear, 
the individual elements are going to stay um, uh, going to stay intact. I think is the word I want to use. There's not going to be any wobbling around or um, any chance that, say, the, the, the jammed heart's going to start losing its filling or the top hat's going to lose its brim. Because if you use a new thread and something breaks, you've only got to repair that little component. So we're going to start by putting the, the hat on the flamingo. So I'm just going to weave through a couple of beads rather than use a keeper bead here. If I just weave through and go back and forth on myself a couple of times, as if I was weaving the end in, just go through a few beads. Whoops, there. Then what you'll find is when we pull on that end of the thread, it's not going to work itself loose. So now I'll just trim off that tail because it's easier to do now. And then if I offer up the flamingo, I can see I want to be working quite close to the center of the, the top hat. So if we just come through here, and I am using a size 12 needle because a lot of these beads have already got quite a bit of thread running through them. So the finer needle will make life easier. But again, as I've said in previous videos, don't force your thread through, your needle and thread through, because that's where beads will start to break and that's where you start to get a little bit frustrated. So I'm coming out of one of the beads on the inner edge of the brim and I'm going to go through my beads on the flamingo's head. So we'll go through that side and we'll come back up through this other thread and back through back through that bead for a second time this is a little bit tricky to see because it's black on black but through that bead there trying not to split the thread a second time so there we go and then we can attach the flamingo at the the back And it'll come through and see how that sits. Oh, I think that's going to be quite dashing. And we'll go through and through the, the other side. And this is where having the double sided components really come into their own because they're nice and stable when it comes to doing things like attaching, attaching hats to flamingos. <laughs> So we'll just go through there a couple of times. Just make sure that's nice and firm. Like that. Oops. And there we go. And that now feels nice and secure. That's not, not moving around at all. So we'll finish off this thread end back in the brim of the hat. There are fewer threads in the brim of the hat than there are in the head of the flamingo because of the way they're made. Because the flamingo's done in brick stitch, it's got more thread in each stitch than the peyote stitch of the brim of the hat has. So it's something to just bear in mind when you're finishing off your thread ends. If you can, just go through the a component that's got the fewest number of beads so there we go and then we'll just trim that off there and I think my life is now complete because I have made a flamingo in a top hat and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to connect the flamingo just at the moment I'm going to work up the side um, or up this side and do the connections there first so that it's not the flamingo's got quite a lot of places where your thread's going to get caught so we'll just leave the flamingo to one side for now and I'm going to work up this right hand side as it's facing me so I'm just going to join in the thread into the bottom of the 
cup and saucer. Now I'm going to thread, um, I'm going to connect onto the, um, off the edge of the saucer onto the, the jam tart rather than through the handle. But you could connect handle and saucer edge if you wanted to do it that way. So let's just work through a few beads as we did before. Let's just come through. You can, if you prefer, tie a keeper bead onto the end of the thread and do it that way. But this is one of those situations where the fewer thread ends you've got um, hanging down or sticking out, the better. Because it just means that things are going to stay. You're not going to get um, beads hooked up around the edge of your other pieces. Let's come up. So they're coming out of... That might be the edge where I finish the thread off. So come out through that edge there and just check that's the way we want the cup to sit. Um, we want it a bit more handle in the air. So I'm just going to come through another couple of beads around here. And don't forget, if you need to, you can always add in the extra rod little seed bead around the edge nobody's going to to notice and if it covers up the thread and makes it easier for you to get where you need to be then do it I say so there we go so yeah I'm a bit happy with the way that's going to sit now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up one of my three millimeter metal rounds and I'm going to stitch into the side of the jam tart. So I'm just going to go through that one bead and I'm then going to come back through my three mil round back into the 15 on the edge of the cup and see how that's going to sit. Mm -hmm. Actually if I go straight up through the middle of that hat like that i think i like that better now now i'm actually playing with it i think that's going to look better so we'll pick up another silver round here and i'm going to go through the point on this heart bead which is one that uh, motif which is one that's we did that sits um horizontally across the bottom so there we go if we pull all that together i think that's starting to look how we want but this is why we haven't added the flamingo because it's now quite sort of dangly um so we'll go through back down through the top through those two beads there and just all that through and pop it down and see how it looks. Uh, yes, yes, I think that's quite nice. So we'll go back through the bead on the base of the tart. Now, don't forget, this is just the way I'm choosing to put these these motifs together. You can do them in any any fashion you like. Um, I, w I want the necklace to be quite jumbly and quite uh, eclectic, I think is the word, the polite word to use. So here we go, we'll go back through here and down. And Come out through that drop and then back into those silver beads. There. So we'll go back through here again and we'll just reinforce this connection once more through there and 
And now, of course, the beads are a bit tighter together, so you're having to do it a little bit by feel. And then through the point on the heart. And now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down through and I'm going to finish the thread in the body of the of the tart again because there's no way really to work through the heart without risking distorting the shape of the heart slightly um, because if we pull a thread up tight through this one side you, you might find that your heart starts to curve and uh, it'll just be easier to join in a new thread above so we'll just go through here again she says there we go and then we'll come through there and through a few beads and finish off the thread end so let's go this way and a connection Ooh, no no room between those two In there and tie a little knot and through another couple there, and then we'll just finish that thread end off so I'll just give that a snip okay so there's our first four components all connected there so the next piece we've got to join in is the Battenberg, which we're going to connect to the heart. And I think rather than connect it the way that would seem most sensible and connect it through the middle of the heart and the middle of the Battenberg, I think that's going to make everything look like it's in a very straight line. and There's not a lot of um, fluidity within the piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect one corner of the Battenberg to one corner of the heart so that there's a little bit more movement and then I shall connect the other corner of the Battenberg to the spade that I've got just here. So that's the next set of connections. So I'm going to start by joining the thread into the Battenberg. So we'll come through a couple of beads. I think I've said the word Battenberg too many times now. It sounds a little bit odd in my head. So we'll come through there. We'll just hold on to that tail for a sec. Come through a couple of beads. Oops. There. And because we've done a lot of reinforcing with the square stitch, these are quite full of thread. So you might just need to give it a bit of a, you need a bit of a wiggle to get it through. And uh, here we go, so through there. As you can see, my needle's starting to look a little bit second-hand as well. It's not quite as straight as it was when it came out of the packet. But there we go. And I'll come down through another couple of beads until we come out the corner. So I'm just going to get the needle tip in. Okay. Now, when we reposition the needle for the other side of this, I'm going to have to go up through that these this side of the button of the cake because I don't think I'm going to get a needle back through there again. It's getting very tight. So let's pick up a three mil bead, and again, like we did with the the top hat here, I think I'm just going to give it a little bit of of space, and I'm going to pick up a second bead as well. So we'll go down into their heart, back up through that other bead on the corner and then we'll come back up through these two rounds and, oops, and we'll go back into that bead that we came out of to sort of 
straighten up the the way the, the bead hangs there and then we'll come through the other bead on the corner because if you remember the Battenberg is double layered and we'll come back through and into the beads on the corner now what you can do as well is you if you want to you can come down into an extra an extra bead into the body of the beadwork like so just to give it a bit more strength in the connection so you're not just relying on those two beads and when you come back up this way if you pull your thread you should be able to get it reasonably invisible so it sits in between the beads if when you've finished you do find you have any beads that are particularly um not beads any thread that's particularly obvious so if you're taking a light colored thread through a dark bead or a um or anything like that then you can just take a, a permanent marker and just color in the thread to make sure that it's not visible so that's the bead i need to go through Uh, on that corner and then we're going to reposition the needle to come out this top corner here now these are the beads that are very full of thread so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back through underneath so I'm coming out the, the bottom layer and then I should be able to get my needle through these beads relatively easily there we go and then we'll go through these beads on the corner so now these beads are the ones that you've um square stitched so this is the the one that's in in line with the rest of the cake and then these are the ones that you add on afterwards so these beads have got a little bit more threading because of the way you make the square stitches so there we go so i think i'm liking how that's and that's looking at the moment so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add this spade so pick up another silver bead and come up through you've got four beads on the bottom of the spade just here so i'm coming up through one of the two center ones and then like we did on the heart i'm going to come down through the the adjacent bead so that's going to be connected in the center but of course you could connect it off center if you wanted to i'll go through the silver bead through the bead on the corner again and move that thread out of the way add that connection there we go and again swap through into the bead on the other layer of the edge of the motif and through again and down here and which bead which side am I on this side and through that way back into the cake and then what I'm going to do is because the next thing I'm going to connect is the cake then the lemon tart and then I've got the two playing cards left to attach so I think rather than work, try and work up through here because you're likely to see quite a bit of the thread if I try and do that. I'm going to finish this thread off into the Battenberg and then I'm going to join a new thread into the lemon, lemon tart. So finish the thread, start a new thread into here and then connect down this way. As you can see, I've joined in the thread into the um, lemon tart. I've also straightened my needle out a little bit. I've picked up a silver bead. I've come through the size six 
seed bead for the cherry on the top of the cake uh, coming out the bottom so I'll pick up another silver bead and then I'm going to go through the tip of the spade oh yeah we'll leave it with two because then it balances quite nicely we'll come back up up through that hole if you remember there's a hole in the middle of the drop um a hole in the bead in that's in the middle of the cake so that makes it nice and easy to thread through you don't have to worry about um any complicated thread paths so pull that up we'll come through back up and oh just looking at that that way if you just studied a few dark brown um delicas in there so shiny delic black brown delica in there you could have a chocolate chip cookie so and then we will come back through the bead on the tart oh i'm thinking about biscuits now that's not a good idea and then we'll come back through this string of beads again through once more now this, as we did with the uh, the jam tart we're just going to work this needle around to the other side of the beads whoops this is of course the problem now everything's starting to get a bit tangled a bit tangly so just go around the edge here like so. And two more. one I think let's have a look yeah so that's the next connection there what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to put this to one side for a moment because I want to stitch these two cards together before I attach them to the rest of the necklace and we'll pick up the silver bead and we'll just come through a couple of beads on the corner like so just to make sure it's it's well connected because just going through 115 is probably a little bit a bit risky at this end of the necklace as i say at the front where the teacup is you've not got so much um pulling through your um your work so there we go and just repeat that thread path there's a second time through there you can get through both of them there we go Oops. There we go, and through there, and then just go through a third time if we can to be on the safe side. Oh. 
think what's actually happened is the size 15 on the corner has actually pulled down into the top of the 3mm bead. So it's actually making it a little bit tricky to get through the 3mm bead more so than the size 15s. So there we go. That's got three thread passes through it. So I think that's going to be nice and secure. So we can just finish off this thread end. And then we can turn our attentions to the other half of the necklace. Oops. Now because there's a bend in the tip of this needle, it's not going quite where I expect it to. So just come through and round on yourself. Now, if you watched the playing card videos, you'll see that I actually made a suggestion about making a double sided card. I haven't used them in this video because I wasn't entirely happy with the way it turned out um, because I needed to adjust the, uh, the colour placement on the back and I haven't had time to fix that. So if you were going to use the double sided card, then you just need to make sure that when you did your connections, they sat like they do on the Battenberg slice. So they sit double, um, double sided so that it hangs nice and evenly. So there we go. There's the, you can't quite get it all in the, the shot, but there's the first half of the necklace made. So there we go. Um, so what I'll do is I will relay out the second half of the necklace because as I've worked everything's got a little bit scattered and then we'll work on connecting those together and then we'll add the flamingo to the front of the necklace and see how we're going to finish the back so I shall be back with you in just a minute. Okay so that's the two sides of my necklace connected together now and I've come back to look at the flamingo and I think I'm going to have him hanging from the tip of his toe um, and connect him across with a couple of silver beads either side between the spout of the teapot and the teacup. So I just need to join in a new length of thread because I didn't leave enough thread at the beginning of joining in the teacup because I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do this connection at the front. So I've just got a little bit of thread and I've got about half a metre three quarters of a meter of thread and I've just got that threaded on the needle and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use another one of these silver rounds as a keeper bead and I'm going to come up through the bottom of the teapot like that and a couple of beads and up, so I'm coming out the tip of the spout. Oops. Like so, and again, there's already quite a lot of thread up the spout. So just take your time and work it through. So we'll come out through the, the pouring tip. And then I'm going to pick up couple of silver beads and I'm going to go through the tip of the flamingo's toe. Don't forget when we made the flamingo we did do quite a lot of reinforcing of his leg so it should be nice and secure. Then we'll pick up another couple of beads this side. like that and then we want the teacup sitting about there so we'll go through that bead on that and then we'll come back through all of these beads again so this should be very familiar to you by now there we go. And we're going to reinforce this. But what I'm going to do is when I come back a second time, I'm actually going to skip going through that tip of the bead there. And I'm just going to go through the four silver beads and back and forth there. So it just hangs. So it just gives you that slight V shape 
to the way it hangs. So I'll come through those silver, through those, through the edge of the saucer. back through just the silver beads again but it does mean we have only got two strands of thread going through the tip of the flamingo for the connection that way. so what we'll do is we'll do one final pass and this time we will go through the toe as well just to make sure that nothing is going to come undone. I'll finish off all these thread ends that we've got here and then we will turn our attention to the back of the necklace. So I shall be back with you again in a moment or two. So now we've got all of our motifs stitched together all of the ends of thread at the front of the um, necklace finished off. So that's now looking absolutely great. So we need to turn our attention to what we're going to do around the back of the neck. So the length of the central section of the necklace is somewhere between 13 and a half and 14 inches, depending on exactly how you fasten it together, how many spacer beads you use, things like that. So, um, what I'm going to do round the back of the neck is I'm actually going to use a little bit of chain. So I've just got some um, trace chain here and I'm going to have a length of that at the back because I think it's going to be more comfortable to wear than if you continued putting the beaded motifs all the way round. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the tail that I've left here and I'm going to join a thread on to this end of the smile. I should have left my tail thread from when I made the, the piece, but hindsight's wonderful. And I'm going to use a soldered jump ring on either end. Now, a soldered jump ring doesn't have a, a gap like an ordinary jump ring, so you can't twist it open. Um, so we're going to stitch that into place on the end of the motif, and then there's no chance of these slipping off. And then on the end of the chain, I'm going to use an open jump ring so that I can twist it open and attach the end of the solder to the end of the chain. Let's get the end and we'll come through. So we're coming out this last 15 that's sticking up on the end there. And then we'll pass through the needle, uh, through the jump ring, sorry, and up that bead on the end. Like so, and then we'll just repeat that thread path a couple of times, as many times as we can get the needle and thread through the beads. I think four is going to be our limit. Yep, that's. I can feel that's not going to go through anymore, so we'll leave it at four there. So that's nice and secure on the end of that motif, and I'm just going to come down and see if I can get through that bead once more just to make sure it's nice and securely attached to the rest of the beadwork. So there we go. And then we'll just finish this thread end off as we've done with all the others. There we go. And through there. There we go, and then we'll finish that thread end off. Okay, and then because the other end of the necklace, the smile has got a black bead on the end, we'll just get a short length of black thread. I don't have a um, 
like it and let's go back on ourselves through there. There we go, and that's holding nice and firmly now. So we'll just come up. Oops. Not catch the tail end in. And so we're coming out this end bead here. And again, and we'll go through here two or three times. Just to make sure everything's nice and secure. So that's four. Now, obviously, the Delicas have got a larger hole than the 15. So we'll go through that again. So there's five. And I think that's going to be nice and secure. So we'll just work our way back down and finish off the end of the thread. I'm just going to try and stay in the black beads on this edge because although I said the other day that the white beads are reasonably um, sturdy for this sort of thing, it's always better to be safe than sorry. So I'll just come through a few beads there and tie a knot. And through another few beads and then we'll trim those ends off there's one and there's two so that's the thread out of the way so now all we need to do is connect these jump rings with a regular jump ring so this one has got the split in it so I'm going to use two pairs of pliers. I've got flat nose and, and round nose here. And we'll just twist the jump ring open. We'll go through the link on the end of the chain, through the link on the end of the necklace, and tighten that up. And that's a nice tight connection. At the other end of the chain connection. There. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the front of the necklace even so that it's sitting how, how I want it to sit, more or less, like that. And then I can cut this end off to the same length and then I've got a little bit of room there for any uh, adjustments that I want to make to the overall length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hold this up around my neck, which is going to make for terrible viewing because you can't see it on camera. And I'm happy with the length that sits, so I'm actually quite relieved I left the slightly longer length chain. And then I'm just going to take another, uh, I'm going to take a, an oval jump ring this time for this end and I've got a lobster clasp and a large jump ring and then we're going to use the oval so we'll open that up we'll hook it onto the end of the chain and now this is as you're wearing the necklace the side with the playing cards is the left side of the necklace as i'm right handed i want the clasp to be on the right hand side so this side i'm just going to add the jump ring and then i'm going to close that up again oops like so hang up that's nice and closed and then so on this side again we'll open up the jump ring Put it onto the end of the chain and attach the lobster and there we go that's nice and secure there we have a fabulous finished necklace thank you for sticking with me through the series and i look forward to seeing you in the future